Chuck roast is an all-American meat that my mom used to cook in a crock pot with carrots and potatoes. Today, we're smoking this roast, and it's so much better than a crock pot. No offense, mom. Plus, we're making an unforgettable sandwich. Are you hungry yet? Hey there, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are indeed gonna be smoking up this amazing chuck roast. We're gonna get it seasoned up out onto our smoker. We're gonna smoke this thing till it has epic bark. Then we're gonna get it nice and tender, shredded apart, and make epic sandwiches. So hope you guys are ready for this amazing video. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button. We'll be posting a new video every single Tuesday and Thursday. So with all that being said, let's season up this chuck roast. So the first thing we're gonna be doing today is seasoning up this chuck roast. And we're just gonna be taking some salt, get a nice little layer of salt across the top here. Just gonna rub this in a little bit. Look at that, it's just melting right into the meat. Now we're just gonna take and kind of pat this in. As you can see, it's kind of already melting into the meat. Perfect, exactly what we want. Now we're gonna be going into our pepper and I'm gonna put a lot of pepper on this. I really want it to have a super nice kind of peppery taste. Almost going with that traditional Texas style, just salt and pepper, because I really want the smoke flavor to shine through, the flavor of this beef to shine through. It's gonna be super awesome, but this salt and pepper is gonna help us build up a really nice bark. And I'm using no binder today, so I'm just gonna be patting in the seasoning to help it stick to the meat. Get your hunk of meat flipped over and let's do the other side. Again, we're just gonna be starting out with our salt. Take a nice little pinch full and just get it all salted up. Kind of get this padded in a little bit and it looks about good for the salt for me. Next up, we're gonna be coming back with our pepper and we're just gonna be layering our pepper on here real nice. Again, this is gonna have amazing beef flavor. We're gonna be tenderizing this in a little bit of beef stock or beef broth or whatever you wanna call it. It's gonna have a great Texas style flavor. The smoke is gonna shine through really, really nicely on this. So go ahead and just keep getting your pepper on until it's, you know, fairly good. You still want to be able to see the meat through it, but this pepper is definitely going to help us build up a nice bark and give a lot of that spicy flavor that the pepper gives off. So we're going to go ahead and call that good right there. As you can see, there's a lot of seasoning on this board. So we're going to season up our sides. We're just kind of rolling this around in all of our seasoning. And if this does a good job picking up all of our seasoning, we won't have to season it, but maybe we'll touch up a few spots. But oh, this is looking pretty good to me so far. So I already fired up my smoker. It's running at 250 degrees right now using hickory pellets. This smoke is going to take a long time just how it would with any kind of like a pork butt or big piece of meat. We want to smoke it at a lower temperature like 250 or 225 to really break down and render all of this fat in here. And we want to cook it low and slow so that the meat is able to get really really tender. So I'm honestly probably going to smoke this for about five or six hours. I'm not too concerned about any kind of time. My main concern is the color of the outside. We want to get a really nice bark on there. We want this to absorb a lot of smoke and then we'll work on tenderizing it. You guys will see that in that part of the video but for now let's go and get this out on our smoker so we're out here at my smoker today i'm using the pit boss austin xl we're gonna get this chuck roast on there and just to give you guys a little bit of information this chuck roast that i bought was a total of about four pounds hopefully i can help you guys with how long it takes me and the size of the meat that you buy but just know that these will come in all different sizes so you just need to remember that when you're smoking this at home so let's go ahead open up our smoker and get it on all right so i'm just gonna get this big old hunk of meat right here off onto our smoker and i think she's gonna sit right here today and i'm just gonna kind of bunch it up together a little bit and she's just gonna hang out here and smoke i'll come out at two hours we'll open it up and take a look i'll see you guys then all right hey guys welcome to my garage it's raining so apparently i didn't check the weather and i'm smoking in the rain so you get a little ugly shot of my garage it's just it is what it is but we're at the two hour mark now let's open this up and see what our truck roast looks like all right as you guys can see we are starting to look really great this bark is starting to form uh, it is getting rained on though so i'm gonna go ahead and spray this down i'm actually using beef broth look it's so nice i'm gonna call that good let's get it shut down and i'll sh tell you what i'm doing next so now at this point it's been on for two hours it's getting a really nice color i want it to get a little bit more smoke build up a little bit of a better bark so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna come back out in one hour we're gonna check it at the three hour mark and i'll start to make my determinations on when i'm gonna get it in my pan and get some beef broth in there and let it tenderize so i'll see you guys in one hour and we'll decide what we're gonna do then we are now at the three hour mark let's open this up and see what we're looking like all right guys so here's how our chuck roast is looking as you can see we are getting epic Epic, epic, amazing bark. This is starting to look really, really beautiful. So you have fat starting to pull up right there, starting to render. We are looking pretty dry, so let's go ahead and spray it down. So we're just gonna take our beef broth. We're just gonna get a nice little coat. Just kind of get our sides up a little bit. We don't want that meat to dry out. So, 
and that looks about good to me. So at the three hour mark, we are looking absolutely amazing. I'm really happy with how this is turning out. At the four hour mark, I might check the internal temperature, kind of see where we're looking at. I'll probably spray it again. And we are getting closer to the wrap now, so I'm gonna kind of keep a closer eye on it. I could tell it's picked up a lot of smoke, so it's looking really nice. So I hope you guys are getting just as hungry as I am. This is gonna be an amazing dinner. I'm making an awesome slider. Stick around to the end, and I'll show you how I make those sandwiches, how I shred this apart. So I'll see you guys in a few minutes. Now we're at the four hour mark. Let's open this up and see how we're doing. All right, as you guys can see, this is starting to look absolutely perfect. Still really tough. It's not tender at all, but you can see this fat is really starting to render down. So I'm gonna go ahead, spray this bad boy down, and, and I'm gonna check the internal temperature, see if we're ready to bring it inside and get it in our foil yet. Get it in here and see what we're doing. Yeah, so we're pushing right at about 160 internal temperature. Over there, it's uh, about 170. You know, back over here, it's about the same 160-ish. So I'm gonna go ahead and probably give this another 30, 45 minutes to an hour, and then we'll wrap. We are officially at the five hour mark now. I just wanna give a quick disclaimer. Uh, you probably really shouldn't put this in your garage. It's not a good idea. My house kind of smells smoky. So make sure if you do, you have really freaking good ventilation. I mean, really good. It's raining, I don't know what to do. So, but let's check this out, the five hour mark. All right guys, so as you can see, we are looking absolutely phenomenal. This bark on here, super epic. I'm gonna go ahead and get a quick temp read in it, see where we're at. Yep, we're up here right around the 170 mark, so we're really good to go ahead and get this thing inside, get it wrapped up now. It's really hitting that stall. We want to get this bad boy tender, so let's bring it inside and wrap it up. We're back inside now, and we have our chuck roast inside of this aluminum pan. I also went ahead and made about 32 ounces of this beef broth, but I ended up using probably about four ounces to put in my little spray bottle, so this is probably only about 28 ounces or so. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour this beef broth in here. This is gonna help get it tender. We're gonna cover it with foil and get it back on our smoker. But the one thing that you really, really, really need to make sure that you do is heat up your beef broth, your beef stock, whatever it is that you choose to use, because if you put it in cold, what's it's gonna really lower the temperature of this meat, and our goal is to get it up past 200 degrees not lower the temperature at all so we really want to make sure that this is warm so we're just going to want to dump this in here now get it in there and i don't really know what to say you just get it in there and i'm thinking that that's probably about good it's probably actually only used maybe 16 ounces so the next thing we're doing here we got our aluminum foil we're just going to take we want to make sure that we crinkle these edges really really good we want to make sure that this is nice and tight so no steam can escape. And this looks like a really nice tight seal to me. Let's go ahead and get it back out on our smoker. We are now at the six hour mark. We've had our chuck roast wrap for one hour. I'm gonna check the intro and temperature and just get a feel for where we're at. So go ahead and very, 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 very carefully unpeel this. If you have like a heat glove, you should use it. Don't be like me and be stupid. Or you can be like me. Ow. There's a lot of steam that's about to come out of here, as you guys can see. You know, only first degree burns. So, right, we're gonna lift this back a little bit. Oh, look at what we got going on here. This is looking super, super amazing. So I just wanna stick this in here and get my temperature. And we're about 193, so we still have about another good 30 minutes to an hour left, so I'll see you guys soon. So it's been about another 45 minutes. Let's go ahead and check the internal temperature of this chuck roast and see how we're doing. We're gonna go ahead and open back up our pan and please be careful, really, really hot. Let's go ahead and see if we can just pull this out a little bit very carefully. I can't actually, it's really hot. So I know we're gonna be done. Yeah, look at that, that's beautiful. Oh, that's so perfectly nice and tender. Oh my gosh. Yeah, 211. All right, so it's time to bring it inside. I'll show you what I do next. Our truck roast is now back inside. We pulled it off the smoker. Now it is time to let it rest. So I don't want this to keep cooking. I want this to actually rest and cool down. So I'm just gonna open this up let some of the steam vent out for about a good minute or two, and then I'm gonna close it back down and let it sit out for one hour. So now your couple minutes is up, go ahead and close it back up. Make sure the seals are nice and good, and we're just gonna let it rest for one hour. Okay, so our one hour rest on this chuck roast is now completed. It's time to slice into it and have a taste. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and separate this right here. It's a big fat cap right here in the middle. And I just wanna show you how this looks like. As you guys can see, we have an amazing, beautiful smoke ring. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just get a couple slices of this chuck roast out of here. As you guys can see, this is absolutely beautiful. This is how you want your chuck roast to look. It's super nice and tender. It has a beautiful smoke ring. This meat is 
looking perfect to me. All right, so it's time to take a bite, see how this tastes. This is ridiculously tender. Look at how easy this just pulls right apart. I mean, with no resistance whatsoever. It has great bark, perfect smoke ring. So you can see it's still steaming hot, but it was absolutely delicious. But we're not done yet. I'm gonna make a really awesome sandwich and show you guys how I eat this when it's all shredded up. So what I'm gonna do now is just take these nice little bear claws that I have, and I'm just gonna go ahead and start to smash this apart. This just shreds right apart so beautifully. This stuff shreds up so nice, so tender. And if you want, you can go ahead and put this back in that au jus. We did save some of that. This stuff right here that you're looking at is gonna make some of the most epic sandwiches. I'll show you how I like to eat my chuck roast sandwiches. So now that our smoked chuck roast is all shredded up, it's time to assemble our sandwich. So what I have here is I just have a normal bun and I went ahead and I melted some pepper jack cheese on it. Now we're just gonna take some of our shredded beef and layer this on here. Go ahead and get a nice little layer of this pulled beef. This pulled beef looks phenomenal. So I'm just gonna take about a nice little spoonful and I'm just gonna drizzle it all over this sandwich and last but not least we have the most beautiful fries of all time these right here are arby's curly fries and i decided instead of doing like the traditional onion ring on top of barbecue why not use arby's curly fries because why not and now last but not least we just place our bun on top and voila we have a beautiful sandwich now that our sandwich is all assembled there's nothing left for me to do then to just pick it up take a big bite here we go So I just want you to know, this is 100% completely my own creation. I've never seen anybody do this before. Curly fries, the pulled beef, the pepper jack with a little bit of barbecue sauce. I was just thinking of how I can make this video really special and I think these Arby's curly fries really kick it off to a whole new level. I'll give you guys one more bite. All in all, this is a win in my book. I'll definitely be making this again for family or friends. And I hope you guys use this recipe, share it with your friends and family too. So if you're not subscribed, be sure to subscribe to this channel. I'm making tons of videos like this. I'm posting two every week, every Tuesday and Thursday. So if you guys could like this video, share it with your friends, let your dog watch, let your cat watch, maybe feed them some of this too. Let me know what they think of it. I don't care, I just want everybody to try this. So with all that being said, I hope you have a great day, night, or whatever time it is when you find this video. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video.